My name is English. Funny name for an American, I know. What I meant by that was my family name comes from England, though you can tell by this accent that I don't. That's Chad. Known him for as long as I can remember. He's my brewing partner, which means I mostly spend our brew days keeping him and his kids out of trouble. But really, he's like a brother to me. As you can tell from this bad impression, the only thing we have in common was Jason Statham, a pair of receding hairlines. What do I know about English bitter? I'm a homebrewer from the States. I was a happy homebrewer until a couple months ago. And then, what do I know about bitter? Isn't that how Tottenham fans always feel? Hello from across the pond, everyone. So it's a it's a gray, overcast day. It's freezing cold right now. If only it was raining, then it would be the perfect weather. Very fitting that we are brewing a um, English bitter. Uh, is a style that I have maybe fetishized, if you will. <laughs> ben kind of turned me on to European styles in general. We were talking like right before we started shooting and even Pilsners, I was never super enamored with. Didn't like Pilsner. What are you? Afraid of the Germans? I think it comes from watching too many movies and TV shows set in England. People go to a nice pub and they have a delicious bitter. I appreciate the idea of like, it's a flavorful, low gravity beer that you can have a few of. It's turned into one of my favorite styles. I like the drinkability of it. I like the fact that you can have a few pints and not just get completely destroyed. If you're a you know, stupid American like I am, it makes you think of this idealized England that doesn't exist anywhere. <music> Inspector Barnaby's going around at the the village pub investigating a murder. The thing I enjoy about the style is its kind of simplicity. You know, basically using three ingredients to their fullest potential. You've got uh, flavorful English malts. Then you got your English hops. So we've got East Kent Goldings. You try to use a yeast strain that's full of character. Uh, we went with some Imperial Juice, which is the London Ale 3 strain, the Boddington strain. It's probably my favorite yeast strain anyways. The spear was brewed in honor of, or perhaps in spite of, Chad's favorite football team. Tottenham Hotspur. So I became a Tottenham fan. I guess I should take it back a little bit. So the way I got into um, enjoying soccer at all was because I, I played it when I was a little kid. I got a bit of a confession to make. I don't really follow football, not even the American kind. Chad's the sports fan, and right now he's going on some lecture about his history of hooliganism. Seeing as how this is a homebrewing channel, I'll go ahead and skip to the important parts. This is the first time we've brewed a bitter, and the second time we brewed one in honor of Tottenham Hotspur. The previous time went all pear-shaped. We brewed it on the day the Spurs lost the first ever Champions League final. It was one of the darkest days of my life. 
<laughs> Needless to say, Chad was so pissed at all senses of the word that I had to finish off the brew day myself. At this point in his monologue, Chad starts saying some very rude and anatomically impossible things about other English football clubs. So perhaps it's best if we just skip ahead to the brew day. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. There's three types of English bitter. Ordinary bitter, best bitter, and extra special bitter. Naturally, we went with the best bitter. So yeah, I mean, what we're aiming for with this one is just to emphasizing drinkability, emphasizing accessibility, and also trying to have it to where it's a nice malt forward beer with a little bit of complexity with the hops and everything. So should be good. Hopefully we don't screw it up. And uh, yeah, come on you Spurs. And like that, he's doomed us. After chilling down to work, we realize the heating unit in our fermentation chamber isn't working. So we have to ferment it at room temp in our brewing closet. I hope everything turns out right in the end. thing to note we actually have clarity in this beer this beer is pretty crystal clear no findings or anything kind of got a little stone fruit to it i'm assuming from the yeast maybe some malt smells like the crystal malt maybe yeah adding some sweetness kind of some delicate hop aroma maybe you i'm gonna blow your mind when i say this um smells like beer. So with this, we went with a low carbonation trick where we uh, added our usual priming sugar amount to the bottle, but we used a 22 ounce bottle. So we could sort of mimic that cask ale experience, which I think really enhanced the beer. It allows, um, I think, a lot of the maltiness to shine through and the yeast characteristics as well. Flavor-wise, I do think that the yeast and the malt just pair perfectly. Like big stone fruit uh, from the yeast. The London Ale 3 strain, Imperial Juice, is just like bringing these delicious stone fruit esters, that characteristic mouthfeel and just kind of like softness. Yeah, that's my favorite yeast. Like, it's so diverse. I mean, we've used this it's, in a, a New England yeah. IPA, we've used it in an English bitter. I mean, yeah, like, and it's crystal clear in an English bitter. Yeah. 
but uh, it's got an amazing mouthfeel, clarity, probably one of the best bottle conditioners out there. For sure. And it pairs perfectly with this, the crystal malt character, which is not overdone in any way, shape, or form. No way cloyingly sweet. More like Arsenal's the worst. Like, I'm not gonna lie, this is actually one of the best beers we've ever brewed. We always say that, we oftentimes say it, but. Well, the best of the style we've ever brewed for sure. But I think like in terms of our brewing quality, you would never guess from the way we actually brewed it, but this tastes very well brewed. Two grumpy men brewed this on a cold yeah, day. And... Like a lot of people say like a Pilsner or a Bitter is one of those beers. It's a classic style. You have nothing to hide behind really. It's all about balance and process. I feel like that we've made a conscious shift towards drinkability. And this is like, you can't get more drinkable than this, man. Like to me, I mean, this is yeah, like... the idea is we package it in 22 ounce bottles because I knew I had these big mugs and I was like, well, you imagine like drinking a pint or say an imperial pint is about 19. 20 ounces, yeah. 19 point something ounces. So this is a little bit more than an imperial pint, but yeah, it's meant to be drank like this. Yeah. Uh, this is just super flavorful. Of Phenomenal. The four, of the four bitters we've brewed, this is by far and away the best one. We proceed to spend the next 30 minutes patting ourselves on the back for such a good brew like the couple of wankers we are. I'll spare you the metaphysical onanism and wrap things up here. Like and subscribe for more grain of glass videos and follow me on Instagram at hopheadbanger for much more real time home brewing and pro brewing nonsense. So I guess to answer the question, what do I know about English bitter? I guess the answer is quite a bit. Cheers, mate. So uh, I've got a cool mug that I got for Christmas that says, is our fake brewery name, Funky Chicken Brewing. Uh, Chad over there is using my sister Emily's Triforce glass. Thank you, Emily, for leaving it behind. My expectations were low and they were exceeded, okay? We actually- That doesn't sound like Tottenham. Yeah, we'll see. Remember we like- Mine were high. <laughs> we held off brewing this beer. If you recall back on our Rauk beer video, Tottenham was top of the league and we're like we can't we can't brew the Tottenham beer because we're gonna jinx them and so we waited till they already messed up themselves and they were like all right it's over it went so much further than I am like that then <laughs> <laughs> that was spursy <laughs> um oh it's stinky <laughs> sorry <laughs> this is oh. like quesadillas oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. When you fart and it smells like a beautiful campfire, <laughs> what do you even have to complain about in life? Like, you're just over here farting beautiful aromas, they put in Yankee candles. <laughs> we should definitely edit that part out. <laughs> we should edit a lot of this part out. That is inappropriate, young man. <laughs> Excuse me, Language, princess. sir. It's a family channel. <laughs> That's what we should have called it. Family channel. Brew. Grab the butt funnel. <laughs> Quick! I'm gonna put this, this bitter in my butt. I'll tell you how good it is. <laughs> There's no way I can use any of this stuff. <laughs> I might say apologies to the brew bros who follow us for uh, any horrible Americanizing.